like to welcome you to the Restore Broadcast. My name is Pastor Tim Pepper, and this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Will you join me as we open up our broadcast with a word of prayer? Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, so that whosoever will, whosoever will choose to repent of their sin and turn their lives over to Jesus Christ and believe that he died on the cross and rose from the dead and that he is the chief cornerstone. He is number one. He is the alpha of all creation. And he's more than just a prophet. He is God in the flesh. And I thank you for the testimony of Scripture, not only in the New Testament and the Gospels and of Paul and of Peter and of James, but also in the Old Testament we find this mystery. And we thank you, Lord, for the mystery of that tribal blessing. And Lord God, we just thank you that Jesus came to save any and every tribe that as we will learn today Jesus loves all tribes he loves all nations Jesus loves all of God's created people no matter what tribe they're from red yellow black or white they are precious in his sight as the song says and so today as we open up your word and go deep and Pay a tribute to every tribe, to all tribes out there today, to, to extend the love of Jesus Christ to any tribe, nation, people, and language. We pray that you'll speak to our hearts, and we thank you so much that it is through the cross of Jesus Christ and the blood he shed when he gave his life for us, and that you raised him from the dead, ascended him to heaven, and he is coming again real soon. And so you want all tribes to come in and to trust in him as Lord and Savior. So I pray you speak to us today through your word, Father. And maybe some of those who are out there who might be like, I've never heard anything like this from the word of God. All I've heard is just the preaching of Jesus alone. And that is what we're preaching here today, Jesus Christ. But we're going deeper to try to understand what you speak to us through your word. And so I pray you open up our minds and open up our hearts. And as I share my heart and my lineage and what you've taught me and what I'm learning, and I thank you for all the people on Facebook that are following us, following me and Cindy right now, my wife. And I just thank you for each and every one of them, Lord. And I pray that as they connect by faith, whether they post or whether they see one of the posts, that somehow you'll touch their heart and you will unite us together under one head by faith in Jesus Christ. And I pray you bless all those who are doing outreach on the front lines all over in, in different countries, Lord. I just pray for each and every one of them. And Lord, uh, there's so many that are connecting, Lord. And I pray you continue to bring more in and that we can unite and under one head, under God our Father, and under our Lord and Savior, the chief, number one cornerstone of all things the chief of all tribes, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we praise you and thank you for that, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us. And this is a, this is a special uh, a stick I, I pulled out a couple years ago when the Lord began to give me the vision for Restore. And I just felt like God put in my heart one day, go out there and cut yourself a stick, and you're going to use this, and you're going to lean on this stick and prayer every day and I do and, it, and it, it's a type of leaning on God and uh, and so uh, many of God's people have have had these types of things that God calls them to and uh, and so this is my my tribal stick so to speak um, this is the restore nations tribal stick uh, for the glory of God and so uh, today the reason why I have it is because today I want to honor all tribes because today's message is about uh, Jesus loves all God's children, red, yellow, black, and white. doesn't matter what color you are. See, that's the thing. In today's world, they're always getting on color. They're always getting on prejudice and judgments, and that is just not right, brothers and sisters. doesn't matter what color you are. You are loved by God. 
And we should not look upon the color of another brother because you don't know what's under the surface and you don't know their history. Because I'm going to teach you something today about my own history that I've discovered because of technology, because of DNA study. And I encourage you to try it for yourself. And, um, but I've learned, <laughs> this is a beautiful thing, that I have within me, in my loins, according to DNA study and test, which I think God has given us as wisdom for this time and season, because it's going to identify who, who we are. and We understand where we came from, what we went through. And that's important, brothers and sisters, that we learn that, that our heritage is a good thing, not a bad thing. Now, there's a lot of things that happened back there that were not good. And so we need to be able to handle that and understand and not take it personal. But we also need to realize we are where we are because God brought those people who, who were before us, our, our mothers and fathers, and they had mothers and fathers, and then it multiplied, and here we are in the year 2024. And um, it, it's all started with when God created Adam, and then what happened after the flood, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and how they were the nations expanded. And then what the promise that God made to Abraham. And that's where the bottom line is. That's where things really started for us. Because when God made that promise to Abraham, he fulfilled it through Isaac and Jacob. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But um, that's very important because that was fulfilled. And David became the conduit. Moses became a conduit of understanding that we need to grip. And see, here's the thing. A lot of people don't like to accept the whole counsel of God. They just want to take the easy stuff out of the New Testament and just run with it and, and build big churches and make lots of money. And that is not what God wants right now. He wants to unite the nations together under one head, Jesus Christ. And it's not about money. This broadcast is not about money. I actually ask you not to send me money just to make a point because I'm not in this for money. I'm in this to unite God's people under one head because Jesus is coming soon. And so <clears throat> I just want to share, we're going to get into some passages of scripture. So you want to get your Bibles, make sure we're going to go old school. I'm not going to have any postings up here, but you want to get your Bibles out because I think we need to be in our Bibles reading and bring them, you know, to where we're learning the word of God and not just up on our phones all the time. We need to read the word of God every day, I believe. And I think it's good you can listen to the word and get more acclimated and understand the big picture of the word from your phone. I encourage you to do that. But I'm going to talk to you today about DNA and, and, and my particular DNA and, and why it is so important that we understand that Jesus loves us no matter what our heritage, no matter what our color. And somehow, by the grace of God, if we could all just come together, no matter what our color is, brothers and sisters, I think it grieves the heart of God that there's so much prejudice in, in different countries. We are different, and God has made us that way, and it's a beautiful thing. And, and, and that is a beautiful thing if you're, you're red or you're yellow or you're black or you're white. You are beautiful just the way you are. Now, first look at me, you're like, well, you're a white man, and... and and, uh, and somebody who might have a, uh, not like a white man might say, yeah, you're just a white man. You're one of those white people. Let me tell you something. I got, I got news for you. My skin might be white, but according to my DNA test, and I want you to know this, and, and it's something you could look at too maybe for, because maybe you got some other color than what you're seeing, and that's why we don't judge by our face, okay, because Jesus loves red, yellow, black, and white. doesn't matter what color you are. Jesus loves you. And that's why Paul said, it doesn't ma matter if you're Greek, Jew, Scythian, bond, free. The love of Jesus is free for whoever will come and repent of their sin and trust in Christ. And so what I discovered with my DNA, and there's two sources that I learned, and one is um, Ancestry, which is a very helpful, this is not a plug-in for them, but this definitely came from them. But the other one is, because of my health, I have had to have uh, a lot of medical uh, uh, things through the University of Michigan Hospital. And that's not a plug-in for them either. But they did a gene study of DNA, which they did for a lot of people, and this is all happening right now. There's a lot of studies going on, and I believe there's advancements happening. And I believe God's done that so that we can understand who's who. 
in these last days. And I think that's important because we'll look at what that means from Scripture in a little bit. So, um, but, but nobody's excluded from the gospel, brothers and sisters. Just understand it. If they repent of their sin and they place their faith and trust and follow Jesus Christ, nobody's excluded. Okay? But my DNA, I need to tell you, I have in this body red, yellow, black, and white. And according to my DNA and the history of my, my mother and father and my grandmother, great-great-grandmother and the studies I've done, I've got it all in me, brothers and sisters. You may too, even if your, your color is not white or your color is not black or red. You may have it in you. You need to get a DNA study to find out what's, wh who you are and who the Lord has in you. And remember, it doesn't matter what your background is. You, the, the gospel is open for everybody who will come to Jesus Christ and repent of their sin. And so I found my, my strongest is the English. I have English. That comes on my dad and a little bit on my mom's side. And that's all of Northern, or Northern Europe. Um, and so uh, that's number one. Number two, I have a lot of Swedish in me. That's my grandmother um, on my dad's side. She was a, a beautiful Swedish woman and she was a sweetheart. And that's from the countries of like Sweden and Denmark and Norway and Finland. And so that's a part of my DNA. So I have parents down the centuries that came from England. I have parents down the century that came from uh, well, Scandinavia is what they call it. And those are my two biggest. And then the next one is, of course, I have Irish in me, which would be Ireland and Scotland. I have a, a, a marker in my body that says one of my parents or some of my parents are where they were Irish from Ireland. And so here I've got so far three and these are all the, the white. This is the white marker in me. If, if we're looking at color here, remember Jesus loves red and yellow, black and white. And then fourth, I have, I have German. I have some German in me, believe it or not. Um, the Germanic nation is what they call it. So, um, and there's a small marker, not not as large as the others, but there's a marker in, in my DNA for that. So here we have all my my white markers. And again not about what color we are. And I wish by the grace of God we could just love each other and, and enjoy the beauty of one another rather than judging one another by our color. And I know there's been some injustices, brothers and sisters. I'll, I'll speak a little bit about that because I know my heritage had some injustices. And I'll do two of them. And, and, and. So I get it. I get it. What people did to people back in the day is not right, but you know that's a different generation and we can set a new track here and love one another in Christ and bring peace to, on all the earth and bring everybody together. So, so there's four of them and I, the way I figure, I got 12 nations in me. So here's the next one, which was a big surprise to me that I have within me Northern Africa. I have the marker of one of my ancestors, I had African in me from North Africa, according to the, these DNA tests, that within the last, I don't know how many years, you know, 10 generations or so, one of my mothers or fathers was from North Africa. And so, and, and, I, and I know we have a lot of people from Uganda, Uganda and Kenya following us, um, and, and, and so, that is part of my DNA. So I have black in my DNA, brothers and sisters. Now it might be just a small portion, but it's still there. So I got white and I got black in my DNA according to what, I'm, what I've learned here from these two DNA tests. And so I can feel that pain that, that, that some people who have gone through the suffering of the past, I can feel the pain because I got it in me too. And so it's not right for me to judge them, and it's not right for them to judge me just by my color because I got it in me, and we don't know our past. So we can't judge each other. We need to love each other. So guess what else I got in me? <laughs> I just found out recently. I have yellow, which is, which to my big surprise, I have within me roots from my DNA that go back to India, Pakistan, 
and Bangladesh. <laughs> I was like, well, no wonder I love those people so much. I love all people, and I, and I love and I love uh, my 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 friends from from like Kenya and North Africa. I love my friends from India and Pakistan and Bangladesh. We got a lot of them following us, and and I love you guys because, well, guess what? I'm related to you. We're all related to each other. The truth of the matter is, to some level, right? It all goes back to Abraham, goes back to Noah, goes back to uh, Adam, right? But to to see that that that's part of that that God put our ancestors in the nations, and here we are now. God put the nations in us. Think about that. That's that's some deep stuff. Praise be to God. So uh, the next one I have. Is is uh, which probably should have been up with the other is I have Russian a little bit of Russian and Eastern Europe, um, and 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 that is a that is a, a white marker. But it's so a lot of these have dom dominant Jewish connections, brothers and sisters. And uh, if you know what the Scripture teaches, that a lot of what happened after the exile was was the ten tribes went north, and I think that became a lot of Europe. Okay. A lot of Europe became those those scattered tribes, and then a lot of them scattered all over everywhere a different direction. Um, and so, but that's not the last one. So I got red, or I got white, yellow, and and black in me, in my DNA, brothers and sisters. I have ancestors with that color. That's why we can't judge the color, because I got it in me. And the one that I that I am so surprised and was so excited about because I'm trying to learn more is that my mother, on my mother's side, my great 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 grandmother was a full blooded Native American woman. And I'm not gonna go into the things that happened to her. Because between her and this, I think this other uh, African marker in me. I think there was some really bad injustices, and I know history shows it. There was some bad injustices in our country, but I'm not digging in that. Um, um, because, but, but here's the thing. We have a lot of people out there making a big fuss about all the things that happened in the past and how they did this injustice to them. Well, guess what? I was one of them, too. Because my grandmother was a Native American Indian, and I know exactly what tribe she was from by word of mouth. And I learned it's through, in, in, in the United States, it's the Ojibwe and the Shawnee tribe, I'm pretty sure. And I'm trying to track it down, but unfortunately, uh, there's, there was some issues with uh, what happened with the government, what, what the United States government did at that time. And I'm not going to get into to any prejudices here, because there was a lot of bad things that happened to the, and there was a lot of injustices to the Native Americans and to the African people that came in. But guess what? I was one of them too. Just because my face is white does not mean I don't have that pain in my heart like people do have in the, the United States. You hear me? And you may have that stuff in your country. But guess what? I believe Jesus came to break down the wall of partition between all nations, red, yellow, black, and white. Because God created us. And the life and the image of God each and every one of us. He wants us to put aside our prejudices. And so now that I've discovered that I have all four in me, I'm like, well, no wonder I love everybody and I want to see everybody. And the Lord drew people to me. I didn't do anything special for all these people to come to the Facebook. That, this is something God said to me. He knows in my heart that I have desired to see lost people come to Christ. And I don't care what color they are, whoever they are. We want them to come to Jesus and know Him as their Lord and Savior. So, let's set aside all our differences because Jesus loves all God's children, red, yellow, black, and white. Okay? Amen? Okay, so now let's look at the Scripture. And let's look at what, what the Scripture says about some of the mysteries about what God said in place. And you know, look at Deuteronomy if you get your Bibles out. Turn over here to Deuteronomy. It's uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. So we turn there to there, and then we we'll look at verse 8. And I've talked about this a little bit, but this is such an important principle. And I don't think a lot of people realize how, how so deep this goes. 
And a lot of people get caught up in time. You gotta look at the Word of God, the eyes of God, and the eternity as He gives us understanding. And so, verse 8 of chapter 32 of Deuteronomy says, says, When the Most High gave the nations their inheritance, when He divided all mankind, when He set up the bounds, boundaries of for the people, according to the numbers of the sons of Israel. He set up the boundaries of all nations and all people according to the number of the sons of Israel. You say, well, Pastor, they didn't come along until, you know, by the way, it was, you know, you got this and Isaac and Jacob, and then the sons, and then you got the Joseph and his two boys, Hebrews and Manasseh, and maybe those of you who know, uh, you got from, from uh, Reuben to, uh, to, to Benjamin. You know, but, but we know what happened here. That what happened was Judah became first. Why is that? Because Judah is where God chose the Messiah to come out of. Because Judah came out of the seed of David. Because God made a promise to King David. Because David had a man, he had a heart that was after God and loved him and worshiped him. And so God said, I'm setting all the nations in the world are going to be in the boundaries of the Israelites through the promise that he made to Abraham. Now Paul gave this to deeper understanding when he begins to say that he has chosen us in Christ for the foundation of the world. To speak about that is hard to fathom because we get so stuck in time with the world. But that's the And in I think we can never one of us have a little bit of good of um, the election type for me. I do. I do. I know. And, I, and with my studies, I've studied. I know and I believe that the Native Americans are definitely part of the elect lost tribe. And uh, a lot of people think, oh, we're looking for the elect to come up. You know, those, those lost, lost tribes out there to come up. And you know what I believe the truth of the matter is? that we all have a little bit of that election within us at some level. And even if we don't, even if we'll die to us. Because he's coming for all whosoever will repent and to keep. We will repent of our sins. We need to lay our lives down so we need to follow Jesus Christ. And another thing we got going in, in this day and age is people like to preach so hard, oh, we're not under law, we're under grace. And I understand we are not under the letter of the law. But Jesus came in and he came. He reset and redirected those commandments. We cannot throw away that law. Now, he also fulfilled all of the ceremonial law. But as far as the moral law, we are still accountable to those brothers and sisters. And the beautiful thing about those we open up our hearts to those by the Holy Spirit's power, by faith. We look at each one of those commands and we look at those things and realize the things that we are still under. The, the commands are literally written by Paul in many different ways, but they're under grace by faith. And if we look at those commands and say, okay, you know, command number one says worship no other gods. And two is worship no other images. Hey, let's look in our hearts. Are we... Are we focusing on other things that we shouldn't be other than worshiping the Lord first and foremost? You can go all the way down the commandments for those, and they become a light and a lamp for us to make adjustments in our lives. Rather than just saying, oh, yeah, yeah, we all sin, so just don't worry about it. Don't even look at the law. No, nope, I don't think we should do that. Because Jesus told us, he said, that those who teach to break the commandments of God are the least in the kingdom of heaven. But those who teach to keep them, teach people to keep them, but also teach, keep them themselves, because that's the key. We need to seek to, to try to keep them ourselves by faith. Now, because we got Holy Spirit with us. We got the power of the Holy Spirit. We got the grace of God. And, it, and when we do fail, we can say, God, forgive me. Give me another shot at this. Let me try this again. And, you know, whatever your infirmity is, you know. And I'm not going to get into all that in detail right now. But you can take those Ten Commandments yourself before Jesus with his help. Or you could jump right in 
to the New Testament where Jesus has said, you've heard it said, but, but I say, where Jesus took the very beautiful commandments and said, okay, guess what? The Pharisees have taken and twisted these for their own good and glory, which as a lot of places do. They take the commandments or they push them out or they reject them. But Jesus says, but I'm saying, let's look, the commandment needs to go deeper in our hearts because that's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to write the commands in our hearts. That's what he promised to do for Israel. And then a lot of people teach, well, you know, guess what? We're not those people anymore. We're not the elect. But guess what? If you are engrafted into a, what, the why if you're a wild vine and you're engrafted into the true vine, guess what? There's an expectation because Jesus said to, to us, and he is the number one chief cornerstone. He is the chief one. He's the chief over all tribes of all nations of all seasons forever and ever. So what did he say? If you love me, keep my commandments because I'm keeping my father's commandments. And if you're going to keep my commandments, you're keeping my father's commandments too. That's where man has built their own, their own kingdom, their own commandments, rather than looking at what God said to do. And so we learn that God has, with the Most High, He has set the boundaries of the nations by the children of Israel. So all the sons of Israel, and if, if they have that in their hearts here and now and today, they may not realize it, but they, God is setting the boundaries to them, but He wants us all to stay within the boundaries of His commands, brothers and sisters, by faith. We're saved by grace through faith, but that grace is what empowers us to follow. And that's why John, oh, I love John's writings. First John, he talks about those who are born of God will keep those commandments. That if we love him, we keep his commandments. And now that we have the grace of God and that we can be crucified with Christ, united with him and put to death that old sin nature, that old savage beast nature within us, that we can be freed from that, we can now raise up in a new power and we can walk by faith by the grace of God in keeping obeying his word and obeying the footsteps of Jesus you know a simplify right we're under the principle of love that we need God to put that take that hatred out of our hearts and put within us love first Timothy 1 5 the restore vision love which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith that's the goal of every command. That we love God and worship Him, and we follow Him, and we love our neighbors, and we love ourselves. Because we take care of ourselves, too. We don't hate ourselves. Yeah, we got that old sin nature needs to die, but the rest of us, God, God created us good. You, you're created in the likeness and image of God, and it's a good thing. So we're going to jump over to one other, couple other passages here in Ephesians, and I've talked about this before, but Ephesians chapter 3, and I love this passage because it talks about Paul as he's trying to win people all over the nations to Christ, and he says in uh, Ephesians, and, and he talks about the, the marvelous plan that God has for the nations or the Gentiles, that is, that is all the people who were not part of the, the Jewish nation at that day and time. He says that, that, that this is an amazing thing that's happening now, that God has opened up uh, the possibility through the gospel and what Christ has done for us. And then he says that he, in verse 14, he says, because God has opened this up, he says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father. This is the Apostle Paul saying in verse uh 14 of Ephesians chapter 3. He says, for this reason, because the Gentiles are can be included if they come to Christ and repent of their sins. He says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. I love what, what the NIV did with this. They did it really good. That, you know, whatever name that you have or whatever name you've been given, or whatever name your mom and dad gave, or whatever whatever the reason is, the Father has your name written. Every family has been written by the Father, and the Father has that name written on you, and you 
written on him. Now, Jesus wants to give us a new name, right? That he said that when we overcome, he will write on us his name, the name of his father, the name of the new Jerusalem, and he will give us a new name, it says in Revelation. A name that says, we love the Lord, we worship him, and we seek to follow his way and tell everybody about Jesus. And we want to obey the Lord, right? We want to walk by faith and continue to keep his commandments by the grace of God. And so that's such a beautiful picture because as he says that, he says that each and every family on heaven and earth, red and yellow, black and white, brothers and sisters, they have a name that is derived from our heavenly Father. That's you, that's me. Okay? And then he goes on to say in verse 16, I pray that out of his glorious riches that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit to your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you be rooted and established in love you may have the power together with all the Lord's holy people. See, that's what we need. See, one of the things I'm learning through my Native American brothers and sisters is the power is in interconnectedness. That when we begin to connect with one another, red and yellow, black and white, and love one another, that is when the love of Christ begins to explode within us. When all tribes come together under one head, the chief tribe leader, Jesus Christ, he is our chief leader. He is number one. He is the chief cornerstone, is what uh, Peter said. And so that's where the power comes in, the interconnectedness, that when we all come together, and that's why Restore, I want, I, my vision is, and it's God's vision, is that we come together by faith, and that God restores us in our hearts, and restores one another, and then we can in turn be instruments to restore uh, other people as he restores us. And all those prejudices that we may have towards one another can just fall away. Anything outside of the Word of God, obviously, we want to encourage people to come in to what Jesus has called us to here, right? To follow within the commands of Scripture, within the Word of God, by faith, by faith in Jesus Christ. Because there's no other way we can do it except for the power of His Spirit. And so he goes on to say that through us coming together, through this interconnectedness, that's where unity comes. That's where the power of His love comes. That's the prayer that Jesus prayed in, uh, in, uh, in John chapter 17. Go read it. He talks about how through the power of his name and through the power of what the word and the promise that he would bring us all together. And that's my prayer. And God's using Facebook in a cool way and, and understanding our connection uh, through, through DNA that we are all interconnected. It's an amazing thing. And so he says, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that is greater surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Let me just say something about knowledge. It's very important. But you know, I've learned a lesson. People do not care about how much we know about the Word of God or anything. Trivia, anything, we could have all the knowledge in the world. They don't care how much we know. Well, some people might. But most people, they don't care about how much we know until they know how much we care about them and love them. Keep that in mind when you're ministering to people. Because we may have vast knowledge and want to impart it to people. But you know, the most greatest thing we can give somebody is the love of Jesus Christ. The love of Jesus Christ. So people don't care how much we, they, we know until they know how much we care. And then they might be interested in us telling them a little more about the things that God's taught us. So we have to be careful and remember, love has to be first. That's what Jesus taught us, right? And so he goes on to say, Now unto God who is able to do immeasurably more, exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask or think or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. 
I like the other translation because it says world without end. And I think that's pointing us to the promise that God has of the new heavens and the earth, new earth. World without end. It's, it's the corruption of this world that Satan has tried to build to complete, completely bring that down to nothing and bringing in of the new Jerusalem, the new heavens and the new earth, where we are the citizens of the new Jerusalem, the world without end. That's, that's where we belong, brothers and sisters. We are not of this world. We are only in it for this short time. We're in a like a probationary period. And so when our time is up, our time is up. But until then, we continue to labor and tell people about Christ. Just a few other things, a couple things. And then and that is in Romans chapter 8. Turn there. I love this passage because this is where the rubber meets the road and uniting all of God's people, all of the peoples who will come to Christ, all the people who will come. There's only one way to God the Father, and that is through faith in Jesus Christ, no matter what tribe you're from. You know, my... my my Christian tribe, I've been, actually been in three of them, and I love all three. One was the, uh, well, there's four, actually, because I was baptized in a Baptist tribe, so to speak, as they call themselves. Um, and I love those guys. And then, then I was also, uh, 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 became a member in a Salvation Army tribe. I love those guys. That, that's a beautiful tribe. And, uh, and then I got a lot of my ministerial training in the Wesleyan Church tribe, and uh, they brought in a nice holiness movement. But my, my tribe my tribe, uh, my church tribe, is the Church of the Nazarene. And uh, I'm not expecting anybody to jump on the Nazarene tribe, but you can. Um, I love the Church of the Nazarene, but no tribe is perfect. And we all need to unite together with the tribes of the Lord, right? The tribes, the, all these, these tribes need to, need to find their way in the 12 tribes, brothers and sisters, where Jesus Christ is the line of the tribe of Judah, right? He is first. He is the chief cornerstone. We need to follow the chief, no matter what tribe we're in, but we got to enter into one of, through one of those 12 tribes where the disciples and the apostles, Jesus said, he would give them the authority to judge. And that's why the scripture talks about there's these thrones in heaven judging all creation. And as there's worship, the elders that are up there, they throw their, they, as we worship the Lord, we throw down our... <laughs> Our, uh, our, the crown that we have and we put it down and we give God the glory we give Jesus the glory because he alone is worthy because he was perfect in everything and we are not he died on the cross for us and he took the punishment for our sin and rose from the dead so that we can by faith trust in him and be forgiven of our sin and enter into that personal relationship with him and with our brothers and sisters and the other tribes that are part of the and the deep to come to know our Heavenly Father, the Father and God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So here it says right here about the love of Jesus in chapter 8 of Romans. If you turn there, chapter 8 verse 10. So what shall we say in response to these things? God said we can be a he did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge to God's elect, to God's chosen people? It is God who does the Who then can condemn another? It is Christ who died more than that. Raised to life and here's the truth. Because that's right the so of God also interceding so for us right now. You know, I love the translation, the older one, where it says that He is God. In the name of all of us, we all have infirmities. And sometimes we don't get where they come from. Sometimes we bring them on ourselves with our addiction, our compulsiveness. Uh, that, that nature in us that, that, that find ourselves chasing after things or the anger and stuff that we need to make sure the Lord takes out of our hearts, whatever it is. Jesus understands and he's touched with the feeling of us as in our humanity, in our infirmities, because something happened back and, and, and it still continues to happen and we make the bad choice and when we make the bad choice, we walk in the wrong path and we put ourselves in a position of the consequences 
and the pain and suffering that sin causes. And that's why God hates sin, because it does so much damage to us. And the scripture does say that Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. That when he gave his body, he said that he was done with sin and he actually gave his life for it and that he's going to be the one to remove it all someday. And, and he can remove it all in us even now by faith. That's a beautiful thing of the gospel. And so he goes on to say that he's interceding for us right now. And then here's the promise. And this is the promise that God made to David. That when we are in Christ, and, and this goes for the, 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 the Israelites, their original covenant God made with Abraham, and then he tacked this on through David, a promise he made, because David was a man after God's own heart. And it's a promise that the love of God will never, ever depart from God's people. And he says, and he made that promise to David, and you can actually read in the Psalms about that promise, where God said that, I promise my love to David, I will not take it away from him the way I took it away from Saul. God did take the love away from Saul, to prove a point. Because Saul was stuck in himself. Saul was chasing after the things of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Saul was not willing to worship God first and foremost like David. Saul was not a man after God's own heart. David was, and that's why we got to make sure we become people who are chasing after the heart of God and not chasing after the things of the world and the flesh and the devil, brothers and sisters. Amen? But look at what it says. He made that promise that that love will never depart. But he did say, that, that love will never depart, but if they break my commandments or if they walk off this path, that he will visit their transgressions with a rod. That's the discipline. That, and that's a good thing for us, especially if we are the children of God and we're walking off the path, God promises that he's going to set a boundary there and he is going to discipline us to try to get us back in line. And that's exactly what Hebrews talks about. Despise, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, brothers and sisters, in Hebrews chapter 12, because it is through that that he gets us back on track. I can't tell you how many times I was running and chasing after the things of this world, doing all kinds of things I shouldn't, and I know God just kind of put a boundary there to protect me so I didn't go off too far. He said, now that's enough, son. You need to get back in line here. And sometimes I think my MS is one of those boundaries because I have to totally rely on him every day. And if you don't know, I have, I have this primary progressive MS. Um, and that's part of my infirmity. And I pray God heals me someday. And if he does, I will give him praise and tell the, Lord, tell the world. But if not, then I will continue to worship him and serve him and love him. You know, So I trust the Lord. He's got it. He's got it under control. He has his reasons for why he allows things to come upon us. And sometimes it's our own fault. And then he's gracious and he can still lift it. But sometimes he just puts it there just like he did with Paul, right? With Paul in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, he had this infirmity. And this infirmity was a thorn in the flesh. But God said to Paul, though you are weak in me, you will be strong. God promised Paul that his grace would be sufficient. Give him the strength that he could continue to do what God called him to do. And that's what we have to believe and trust. And so God says that that love will never depart from us. He says, for it is written, um, what shall, who shall, who, is there anything that can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger, danger or sword or peril? And as it is written, it says, for your sake, God, in Jesus, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. And verse 37 says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Through the love of Jesus Christ, we are more than conquerors by faith. And he says, I am convinced, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other thing in creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, we're going to turn to one more passage here. If you would, turn up there to first, or not first John, the, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 3. 
the Gospel of John, chapter 3. If you're staying with me, I know this is an almost 45-minute message here, um, and it's, but it's a good one, and I believe it's going to help each and every one of us. Um, John, chapter 3, a very well-known passage of Scripture, and Nicodemus having a conversation with Jesus, and Jesus starts talking to him about being born again, something he says that's actually... He says, you're an Israelite leader and you don't know that the law teaches that we must be born again? Well, how is that, Pastor? What is that? Well, it says right in there that, that Moses said that God will circumcise your heart, not just the outward. And that's the work that he's talking about. That he can, and he could have done it back then for them too, they were trusted. But now even more so with Jesus coming and the Holy Spirit being with us that he will circumcise our hearts. That's the born again experience when he cuts out that sin out of us. And that's the picture of baptism. When we're baptized, we go down in the water, our sin, our past, our everything goes. We are crucified with Christ, united with him. We die. Then we're raised from the dead, washed in the blood of Christ, washed in the water of life into a new life, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the joy of baptism. And uh, if you haven't been baptized, brothers and sisters, you can, and then it doesn't matter if you get it water baptism. That's just a perfect picture. You can get sprinkled, you can get poured, um, but get baptized by faith if you trust the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a very important thing. You know, that's a sign that you trust Jesus Christ. You saying, "I'm a member of the body of Christ." You go get baptized by somebody who is preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, and so that is a picture. Baptism is a picture of that. But see, he was talking about this born-again experience. And he says, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. In the third chapter, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, third chapter of John. And he goes on to say, don't you know that you must be born again? And then he begins to explain to him about faith. And he gives, and I always used to wonder about this. I didn't, I didn't get this. I was like, man, he talked about an issue that happened in the book of Numbers where the children of Israel were complaining and growing, and, and they, had the, they had Egypt. They were, God delivered them out of Egypt, but God had not yet delivered the Egypt out of them because they had a lot of, a lot of that old Egypt, that comfortableness, although they forgot the oppression. That all they could remember was the good stuff, like they wanted all the food from there. They couldn't accept that God had the power to just provide out of nothing in a desert. And we need to believe that there's nothing God, can, he can do anything. If we're stuck out in the desert, he could perform a miracle and bring forth water from a rock. If we're stuck out in the desert, he could set, uh, send for us, just like he did for them, manna from heaven to feed us so we don't starve. If we're out there, he could put shade when it's hot. If we're in the bitter cold, he can shroud us with warmth. It's just amazing. God can do anything, anything he wants. Um, he is God. He can do it. He created it all. And so he controls the laws of all nature and everything that's been created. They just couldn't get that. That They're out there in the desert and they couldn't understand why. And so they started complaining against God and against Moses. And, and God didn't, doesn't like it when we complain against him and not trust him. And I know early Christians, they don't fully understand. And how can you just accept that? But we must, by faith, learn to, to trust the Lord even through the tough times, even through the desert, even through the wilderness. They were wandering in the wilderness. And what happened was, when they started complaining, the Lord was not pleased, it says in the book of Numbers there. And all of a sudden, it says, God sent these snakes, and they came up, fiery snakes, and they started biting the people. And so I like to say, they got the snake bite. You know, they, they, because they was complaining, they got bit by the snake. They got the snake bite. And so, and so Jesus is talking about this incident. And so uh, people were dying from it. It was, it. it was affecting them very negatively. And it was painful for them and it hurt them. And so um, what happened was Moses, God told Moses, okay, so take and put this snake on, the, on this, the top of this. And you lift that up. Well, I never could understand this, but this is what God said to do. You lift up the snake. And when they look up at that snake, then they will be healed. Now, I don't get the, the, the details of that, but Jesus used that as an illustration. And he says, as Moses lifted up the serpent, the snake, 
as Lo Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness for the children of Israel, God healed the snake bite on them. God would heal them from that. And then he began to explain how when he dies on the cross and he's lifted up to die on that cross for us, that when we look by faith to Jesus Christ, that old snake bite that, that we all get from our sin that is passed down from the day of the Garden of Eden, when, when Satan, when Satan uh, became a snake and went in there and he deceived Eve and Eve got the, the worst snake bite. And so did Adam, and they both did. They got the snake bite, and he stole all the stuff of the beauty of creation, and he stole it. He bit them, and he took a whole bunch of everything. And that's that. We deal with that old oh, snake bite nature every day. We do. It's a sin nature. It's a sin. It's a savage nature that that and that that the enemy tries to grip us and get us to do things that we should not do. But Jesus, he came. To heal us from the initial original snake bite, the sin nature. And we all have that snake bite, brothers and sisters, in our tribes. You know, and we need the lion of the tribe of Judah. We need the staff of David. We need the staff of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We need the chief cornerstone to heal us because he died on the cross and he was lifted up. We need to look to Jesus Christ. Repent of our sin. And say, forgive us, Lord. Heal us from this, this snake bite, this old sin nature, because we can't do it. We can't overcome, not in our own grit and strength and ability. Yeah, we can lay aside a lot. We can make the choices, do the best that we can. But all in all, it's the power of God, the grace of God. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again. Then he goes on to say that you must believe by faith in Jesus Christ. And today... We're getting ready to close here, but I'm going to give you an invitation to, to recommit or accept Jesus. If you never accept Jesus as your Savior. But I want us all to have a confidence in that unity of God's love. And so I wrote a special song that's called His Love. It covers a multitude of sins. And I'd like you to listen to that. It's just about a little over a minute long. And we're going to come back. And when we come back, we're going to go ahead and uh, give you an invitation to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you will do that, I believe God will come into your heart. Jesus will come and forgive you of your sin and, and he will give you and he'll heal you of that, that sin nature and restore you and set your life on a new track. So listen to this beautiful song that I wrote called His Love and we'll be right back. All right, his love covers a multitude of sins. It covers. And so today, if you've never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, 
as payment for the penalty of your sin. You never said, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me and forgive me. Jesus came to, to die for all tribes. Not just one or two, but whosoever will come by faith and place their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, His death and resurrection. And don't forget this very important part. Repent of their sin. We must lay our sin down. We must lay it down and invite Christ in and ask Him to help us to walk in the footsteps of Jesus from here on out. And give us the power, the resurrection power, and cleanse us from our sin. Because the Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other way to the Father but through Him. So today, if you like to do that, I invite you to pray with me right now. Let's pray. Just repeat this prayer by faith. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Heal me of my sin nature and take it away from me. I believe Jesus died on the cross. I believe that He is the chief cornerstone. He is number one. He is the chief head leader of all tribes. And I want to submit to His tribal leadership and follow Him today as my Lord and Savior because I believe He died on the cross for me. I believe You raised Him from the dead. I don't understand it all, but I believe and I accept by faith Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to live my life after Your footsteps and, and walk in Your way. Teach me how to be Your disciple and to follow You and to keep Your commandments that You've given us by faith each day. And I thank You for the gift of salvation today by faith. Ask and pray. In your name, the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me here at the Restore Broadcast. Have a wonderful day. And remember, there's only one way. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ, salvation. And he died for all tribes, whosoever will come. Have a good day. We'll see you next week.